as uh, one of uh, our speakers, uh, and also 50 years in academia, this is the 51st. Uh, I still feel uh, invigorated and uh, ready for the next challenges. So the reports uh, um, just uh, passed, uh, I guess, 16 of October, so called for a fast action. Uh, in fact, you know, we have about 10 to 15 years to really take action to avoid uh, uh, higher increase of the temperature. Uh, it looks like the 2% which uh, was signed in Paris Agreement is too risky. It's a uh, much safer pace would be uh, to stay when, with one and a half. Uh, we have already increased uh, last century the average uh, global temperature of one uh, Celsius centigrade. So we need to really look for the new methods and this is why we need to have entrepreneurs to save the life on the planet. So uh, innovative solutions, so where they are coming? They are coming from creative human capital and entrepreneurship represent that type of capital. Entrepreneurship I define in larger sense. Entrepreneurship is not uh, limited to business. Entrepreneurship, we need to observe in public sector, in civic sector, everywhere we have new problems emerging and we have limited resources. This is what we need. And so somehow I define this as securing basic needs and reducing threats to sustainability by offering innovative allocation of limited resources. So uh, there are many stakeholders of sustainable development. I would like to focus in my today presentation on two of them, on the companies and academia. So uh, the most uh, critical problem what we have is to how to use in sustainable way the resources uh, which are available. According to many research, and I am in, I'm working with uh, Professor Porter, uh, about 75 to 80 percent of resources are uh, managed or controlled by business. So why we are focusing uh, much on the government sometime when we should somehow control business, how they use the resources. So there are two major ways. By external forces, by using governmental uh, traditional way regulations, by social pressure from NGOs, or by internal uh, forces. Building, uh, educating. Today I like this uh, introduction to the discussion that education is not limited to the educational institutions. We need to educate everybody and learn from everybody. So we need to uh, look, you know, how we can use internal forces. So this is the uh, last year keynote speaker at uh, the se second Rome conference was Peter Senge. This is the scheme from uh, Willard and Senge showing the five stages to build uh, sustainable companies from non-compliance through compliance, uh, beyond compliance, eco, uh, eco uh, efficiency to integrated strategy and to to mission, and then uh, we see if we use the external forces. There are two examples. The, we have the government pressure here, oh, I can do it. and the, the uh, social pressure. There is a lot of resistance, and the, 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 it creates the type of vicious cycle with different, I observe, you know, I came to the States, 85, it was a big debate at the end of 80s when California uh, government, the, you know, society, this is not just the government because this was the will of Californians to have by uh, 95, 30% clean fleet, clean cars. 
And so what we observe, we observe the vicious cycle of American uh, companies. Exactly, you know, they say, no, it's impossible, big three, sue them. They spent $250 million on lawyers. What they achieved, extension of these uh, standards by two or three years. The other, Japanese, German, Swedish, companies, uh, Toyota, Mercedes, Volvo, they said, no, we will do this. So somehow they move to, move the paradigm. They believe that if they invest in sustainability, they can improve efficiency, they can start building new culture, they will increase profit, it's not charitable. This is offering better products, higher quality. And then they will release the resources for sustainable investment. In, instead of defense, they will make a step forward. So this is something very important because this is a paradigm shift. Paradigm shift to build new culture institutionalized culture in the strategy. This is why I am arguing, you know, that we need to move for the fourth dimension offered by our colleagues, but this is also, uh, I think that I found it somewhere in the 90s, first mentioned the type of fourth institutional dimension in United Nations uh, documents, but no follow up. And then, uh, since 2005, we have a new science, sustainability science, and Joachim Spangenberg, who is our colleague, presented this very informative scheme. And since that time I saw it, I am strong supporter. I mean, we see how important are uh, institutions. We see with the pressure of populism, you know, uh, the breaking constitutions, breaking laws, you know destroying the sustainability culture. The, the, so and this is something which is particularly important these days. So how to get business involved in sustainable development and uh, how to get demonstration of the internships. We have a significant pro problem with growing uh, uh, multinational operations. There are many uh, times uh, larger than uh, small and medium-sized uh, economies, and it's very difficult to control them, uh, apart from uh, external uh, forces. So this is why we should work on developing internal pressure, peer pressure. And this is something educate the leaders, new leaders. This is our responsibilities in academia. I will be talking about educating not only young leaders, but I will show examples of mature leaders, what they change after uh, passing uh, some of the programs, exiting programs we offer. So we have uh, examples of peer pressure, World Business Council since 92, ethical corporations, uh, now we're uh, approaching the 18 business summit, United Nations Global Compact acting since 2000. So we have, I mean, there is, I mean, this is an example, you know, we have already, they started from 43 uh, organizations and now we have over 10,000 uh, already organizations and about, and uh, some of the organizations which are affiliated with them. So 163 countries and 28% of the world's largest Fortune 500. So this is uh, important element and important uh, pleasure, uh, pressure. Uh, according to adventure, uh, Accenture studies, uh, there are about 90 percent of chief executive officers uh, express that there are uh, very, the sustainability is important for them. 72 percent 
that uh, investing in education is important. So this is somehow investing in sustainable enterprise. So then there we see also response of American business school here, very fast uh, uh, introduction. 79% of uh, schools, uh, business schools have already uh, sustainability programs, sustainable enterprise. Uh, so anyway, uh, first at the initial level, the compliance level, but there are emerging courses, programs on building the mission of sustainability. So anyway, uh, so what we, we, we expect, so that we will need to build sustainability, sustainable entrepreneurship, not only in business school, but in other areas uh, 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 in academia. Why physicians shouldn't uh, understand uh, uh, environmental sustainability? They have big impact. Uh, they make big pink impact. I just uh, contributed a chapter to them about the smog, uh, what they can do for the society to avoid uh, producing smog. The newest achievement in sustainable uh, science call us to revise the curricula. I mentioned uh, about uh, uh, the quadruple bottom line. And then we need to teach uh, more about institutions which are pushing toward uh, uh, sustainability. This is an example as Britons operationalized sustainable development, introducing five types of capital. And this is something that I am also fan of that uh, process because here we have very important element we didn't talk much today. And uh, we were talking about human capital, but education is not about human capital. Some of you mentioned social capital, but didn't use uh, strictly this term because you were talking about relations. Oh, excellent uh, presentation. I forgot who did this. How important is the building relations? Building relations is exactly as building social capital. I am, I am economist, so believe me. So uh, investing in, in social capital is equally important because it gives you the trust, it builds you the trust. You might have great ideas, but if people do not trust you, you will fail. So anyway, uh, so we need to, to have our academia, we need to move to student center uh, approach, learning community. I'll be talking in my second presentation a few days uh, about this. Let me move to cases. So, uh, uh, which I experienced, let me share some of the experiences that we can teach really the uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, we ran 2006-2007 uh, an executive program for 77 uh, leaders. About 70 of them were from public sector. Seven we insisted to invite from small and medium uh, enterprises. It was on microeconomics or competitiveness, but in sustainable way, because Porter was the first guy who was telling that competition, I mean, the regulations are good for competitions and so for sustainability in the 80s, contrary to mainstream economies. So anyway, what, what happened uh, after this, uh, that uh, several leaders and managers from the public sector converted to start offering additional services as consultants, and some even gave up the work and they started the environmental partnership. They raised, they prepared 15 projects and raised about $5 million. Okay, uh, we ran, in fact, you know, I mean, as Professor Grazina uh, here, uh, we run uh, with uh, European universities, uh, University of Minnesota, the Warsaw School of Economics, where she is from, in the most polluted areas, the post-diploma studies in management, eco-management, helping local leaders, local communities to overcome the past of the planet, centrally planet economies. 
And then uh, we went uh, in largest countries in Poland, uh, Romania r ran over 10 years with uh, over uh, 380 leaders. Uh, I believe there were more than uh, 350 restructuring projects raised about three and a half billion dollars for a sustainable investment. The, the easiest way is, and this is something what we are talking about impact in education. If you bring experience or the educated uh, leaders and give them some newest knowledge they didn't get yet. So combining new knowledge with their rich experience and managerial skills produce tremendous uh, impacts. So we are talking about young people that are very important. We start doing uh, this as, uh, as soon as possible. We should not forget, however, the mature uh, uh, business people, leaders, give them a chance of continuing education. By the way, professors should also go through continuing education. It's not only for students. Anyway, it was very a significant program. Then we practicing since I used to teach actively 30 years in US capstone, that type of courses. We, I mean, uh, this is an example of Evans School for uh, 20 years uh, we do this. We are getting now, last few years, over 100 projects demanded of, as some of the, from the communities, from our uh, organization, public. Uh, uh, what is interesting, the students say, okay, well, they, they are involved, that there is a certain, you can go on the website that, that you see. What is interesting, that students, uh, students call this, no, let's make a more attractive name. And they called it Student Consulting Club. So somehow they are practicing now entrepreneurship, the social, good social entrepreneurship. And then, uh, uh, so I started doing this also at uh, Kozminski University uh, last three years, uh, mostly for graduate PhD and graduate studies. This year I tried to do with uh, undergrads, but very special from my high school of, and this is something somebody mentioned, Erasmus, Iris Marcel mentioned, a great program. So they are coming for semester, you know, mix up with Polish students. And they are really doing as ambitious program as graduate students. So anyway, give them the chance. First you need to give them the tools and then initiatives to, uh, to uh, so they developed uh, 28 projects and delivered to stakeholders. What is nice when they are coming, the, the, the leader, the stakeholders, and they appreciate the results for their companies. Conclusions. So investing in human and social capital makes sense and we encourage everybody. It, the executives are giving the highest uh, program. I have experience with graduate students. I started with undergrads. It's not that easy, but at the end of undergraduate uh, level, probably they have enough skills to do this. And uh, uh, for business, I mean, this is something breaking the trust, breaking the uh, barriers, uh, showing the business, public and civic organization that these uh, programs opening for our interests, give them the opportunity to look at the data and work interactives, they give very high returns because they are semi-professional people and also for them, this is the proof type of uh, exercising their entrepreneurship because we are still behind, we are facilitating, we are not doing as professors, you know, but we try to keep standards and responsibilities. So anyway, it's difficult to uh, build the initial confidence. Most difficult is to convince corporations, big corporations, that the best way is not mergers and acquisitions, because this is the low hanging fruits, but investing in human uh, capital. Change investing in the change of corporate culture. I have uh, teach the case of uh, Nike, very interesting, you know, how much time they invested. So 
And also, this is not easy on our side, academic, to find experienced faculty members who are not afraid to confront new problems, talking with uh, corporate leaders, and offering additional value. So anyway, so these are my conclusions I would like to uh, share with you. Thank you very much for your attention.